Well, that's a, um, a good welcome. Um, and can I say welcome to everybody who are here. And uh, I was watching on social media last night some of the activities uh, linked uh, to the, the very serious discussions that you've been having this week, uh, talking to each other, challenging each other, uh, sharing experiences, uh, but also having some fun in Dublin, which we like to facilitate also. Uh, and so when I saw a friend of mine uh, tweet images of many of the people in this room dancing last night, uh, um, I realized that, that this, this has been a successful week, I hope, to bring people together, uh, to make sure that people remember Dublin for the right reasons, but most importantly, by bringing people together and creating friendships, we also um, improve our ability to be able to respond to a shared endeavour, uh, which is to improve the quality uh, of health uh, for uh, all of the countries that are represented here, and there are more than 90. Uh, and it's been a real privilege uh, for Ireland and for Dublin to be able to host you here. Uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, uh, this is a, um, a changed policy. Uh, perhaps from the past, everybody who is here this week uh, is here, paying for themselves, uh, wanting to be here and to contribute uh, to the future vision that many of us have. Uh, so thank you for that, uh, and it's been a real privilege from an Irish perspective uh, to be hosting this event. I want to welcome uh, everybody here, uh, government ministers, I know there's a minister here uh, from Guinea uh, and also from Uganda, uh, and also all of the other delegates uh, that have taken the time to be here this week. It's a great pleasure to address the closing plenary of this fourth Global Forum on Human Resources for Health. It makes a very pleasant change for me to be speaking about something other than Brexit, uh, which, I have, <laughs> which I have responsibility for as well as for foreign affairs. Uh, one of my jobs uh, is to try and manage the impossible uh, when it comes to negotiating a Brexit deal that everybody is happy with. So if you think health reform was tough, um, <laughs> it's in the halfpenny place. Um, I'd like to thank those uh, who worked hard to organize this global forum, in particular our colleagues in the World Health Organization. I would also like to pay tribute to those who negotiated the Dublin de Declaration that we've just affirmed today, which maps a path to the fifth global forum on, on human resources for health. And from what I'm told, it's an ambitious path. This is the first forum since the launch of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Your discussions this week have addressed one of the fundamental challenges facing all nations, namely how to translate those global goals into real actions that change people's lives for the better. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is a standout achievement. The 17 goals have the power and potential to transform our planet, addressing the root causes of poverty, inequality, instability and conflict. Fundamental to the 2030 Agenda is Goal 3, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. This is something we all want for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for our children for our communities and our societies. We cannot achieve healthy lives and promote well-being without strong health systems. A strong and effective health workforce is at the heart of any effective health system. The report and consensus arising from the third global forum in Brazil in 2013 remains the utmost importance. We all acknowledge uh, that there uh, is a universal truth, and that is that there is no health without a health workforce. The health workforce is the backbone upon which uh, uh, SDG Goal 3 will be delivered. Investment uh, in our health workforces will also guarantee additional dividends for other sustainable development goals, including Goal 4 on education, Goal 5 on gender, and Goal 8 on inclusive economic growth. I am conscious, though, that demands on our health systems 
have never been greater. Wherever on, wherever on the planet we reside, including in this country, these demands can manifest themselves in challenges to service delivery, challenges to access, and challenges to fairness. This can be seen uh, in the movement of health workers, for example, from the continent of Africa, where, uh, where they are much needed uh, to other wealthier countries, an example of unfairness in the current global health system. And while each individual decision uh, is rational uh, and aimed at addressing a gap, uh, whether of income, expectation or clinical need, such decisions taken together erode national health systems in places that most need strengthening. The World Health Organization reminds us that Africa experiences the highest burden of disease of any continent, yet it has less than 4.3% of the world's skilled health professionals and less than 2% of expenditure on health care. While the continent continues to grapple with infectious disease such as HIV, malaria, cholera, tuberculosis and, and child pneumonia, as well as challenges to improving ma maternal health, which I experienced last week uh, when I visited um, uh, both Kenya and Ethiopia, uh, there uh, has also been a rise uh, in the non-communicable diseases. Uh, this is in the context uh, where the availability uh, skill mix and geographical distribution of health workers to respond to these challenges is drastically inadequate. And when you add to that uh, the rapid population growth story in the vast majority uh, of countries in Africa, uh, we see the challenges that we have to together face. And that's just one continent. Each continent has its own set of challenges. I had the opportunity, as I said, to visit the Horn of Africa last week. We had political meetings, uh, and development engagements in both Kenya and Ethiopia. We also had a program in Somalia that we had to cancel at short notice, unfortunately, for security reasons. Uh, but one of my abiding impressions from the week was the huge demographic challenges the Horn and the entire continent of Africa is facing. In Kenya, one million people need to join the workforce every single year to simply keep pace with population growth. In Ethiopia, that figure is two million. That is the entire working population of this country every year being added to the working population in just one country uh, in Africa, every year. Um, to put that into context, um, the, uh, uh, in comparison uh, to the growth story in terms of job creation in the European Union, the European Union as a whole has managed to achieve a employment growth that is equivalent to what the continent of Africa, so in the last 10 years, that the continent of Africa as a whole has to achieve every year. Uh, and, and that is just the economic growth story. And the implications of that from a health perspective, as well as from an employment one, are both obvious and very stark. Shortcomings in the health workforce stretch well beyond Africa, of course, uh, and current disease outbreaks uh, 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 the same. We know the challenges only too well here in Ireland. Uh, a lot of you might not know it, but Ireland is actually the fastest growing population in the European Union. It's also the youngest population in the European Union. Uh, we will have an extra million people in this country uh, in the next uh, 20 years. Uh, and more than 40% of those people won't have been born in Ireland. Uh, and so we too face the challenges uh, of growing population and growing demands and the reality that people are going to live a lot longer. I work closely uh, with my other cabinet colleagues in government to address the health workforce challenges we face domestically. And I'm particularly pleased uh, to see the launch this week of Ireland's workforce planning framework. This sets out the approach for how Ireland will domestically address our health workforce requirements. However, I'm also acutely aware that other countries, including those uh, who may be uh, uh, considered uh, as high income or developed countries, uh, are faced with similar challenges in how to educate, develop and maintain a workforce that is responsive to a population needs. There's also a considerable challenge of maintaining access to quality health and social services. The open 
uh, working group uh, on the Sustainable Development Goals propose a broad health agenda, the ambitions of, of which are yet to be matched by investment in the health workforce. Yes, uh, we need more health workers, uh, but not always uh, and not necessarily more of the same. In country after country, we are seeing the top-down, doctor-dependent, disease-focused models of health care are neither ideal or sustainable. Education, training uh, and incentives should be focused on creating an efficient workforce that is centred on people rather than on, dis on diseases. Now two years on uh, from agreeing the Sustainable Development Goals, we can see how the international health community has done its part in putting together a coherent framework uh, on the health workforce. The steps include the unanimous adopt adoption by the World Health Assembly of the Global Strategy on Human Resources for Health, uh, Workforce 2030. This outlines policy options and recommendations for member states. The UN Secretary General's High Level Commission on Health Employment and Economic Growth clearly highlights and benefits uh, uh, the benefits across the Sustainable Development Goals from increased investment in the health and social workforce. This report shows that the health sector is a key economic sector drives inclusive economic growth, promotes human security and sustainable development goals, uh, and is also a driver for job creation. The adoption uh, of the ILO and OECD and WHO five-year action plan, Working for Health, is another critical step. This represents a unique approach uh, in the SDG era, demonstrating how Goal 17 and the partnership on partnership uh, can impact across the Sustainable Development Goals as a whole. We have clear guidance uh, on how to plan and develop our future workforce needs. Investment in our health workforces uh, is an investment that has clear economic returns. Addressing health and social needs helps to create decent jobs, enable inclusive economic growth, uh, and most importantly helps to address inequality. I am conscious though in arguing for investment in human resources for health that all of us in government uh, must make difficult resource choices, uh, balancing competing demands. It will be important to keep the momentum going, however, uh, and your work at this forum is a considerable help in that respect. Uh, I, am, I am from a, a city called Cork, which is the second largest city uh, in Ireland, uh, soon to be the second largest English-speaking city in the European Union, I might add. <laughs> So, so you should come there for your next conference. So it is painful for me uh, to have to repeatedly talk about a Dublin declaration, <laughs> which, is only, which is only named after Ireland's uh, second best city. But, but it nevertheless remains the case that this declaration uh, which we have just acclaimed, identifies a number of clear actions which will help to push things forward. The Dublin Declaration uh, is an expression of intent by the international community uh, and its many constituents, uh, as represented here uh, at this fourth global forum. It identifies nine key actions uh, which, if implemented, can improve the lives of citizens in all of our countries. National governments have an important role in prioritising health system strengthening, including enduring uh, an, an, an adequate skills, skilled uh, and uh, compensated health workforce. The, w the WHO has a particular and special role in providing leadership in this governance activity. The, the measurement of and reporting on improvements in human resources for health at both national and international level will be an important demonstration of progress. We need to work to maximise the benefits and address the challenges of the increasing rate of complexity of health labour mobility. The international platform on health worker mobility will assist us in that task. Ladies and gentlemen, Ireland was proud, together with Kenya, to have helped facilitate agreement on the Sustainable Development Goals within the United Nations. Many people said it wouldn't happen. Many people said it couldn't be done politically, but it was. 
uh, and it was done um, with the assistance, I am very proud to say, uh, of two countries on two continents who brought people together to try to get a compromise and a deal on a way forward. The challenge now uh, is that of implementation, of helping achieve the ambition uh, which our shared Agenda 2030 sets out. Each of us has much to do at home to ensure delivery. We can also help each other though. Uh, and I am pleased to reaffirm that Ireland's International Cooperation Programme will continue to invest a large portion of our overseas development assistance uh, on addressing health and HIV and AIDS. Uh, in 2016, uh, this amounted to over 80 million euros from Ireland. We will prioritise improving access to quality, basic health services for poor and marginalised citizens, uh, reaching those most in need. And we will continue to support investment in human resources for health. Uh, this will include the training and retention of health workers uh, in many countries that we have a partnership with. Ireland will continue our support for collaborations which build workforce capacity in partner countries. Uh, and I visited a number of fantastic projects in that regard. I attach importance uh, to the continued development of bilateral agreements to share good practice and experience on health workforce strengthening, building on the existing programme uh, with the Ministry of Health in Mozambique, for example. Uh, just this week, Ireland's Health Service Executive signed a partnership agreement with the Ministry for Health in Sudan. Uh, we can also seek to leverage experience in innovation and technology to inform solutions to the challenge, challenges faced by many uh, of the countries that we are not only working with, but we also have become good friends with as well. I look forward to our continued partnership with the Global Health Workforce Network. Uh, taking these priorities forward will, of course, form part of Ireland's wider advocacy. I hope that you will, uh, too, uh, have similar priorities uh, in what you advocate for, uh, in your domestic and, indeed, your foreign policy. Uh, finally, I'm glad to note uh, that the quality of the discussion and the commitment of delegates to improve human resources for health uh, was very much evident this week, from what I'm told. Your enthusiasm, your commitment and your knowledge uh, is the key to delivery on the ambition of a better global health workforce. Your continued engagement will help realise that ambition. Uh, and I hope uh, that you will leave Dublin with fond memories, but also with some new ideas, uh, with renewed determination and energy to get things done. Uh, we all know that across the globe right now there is competition for health, skill, uh, health workforce uh, skills. Uh, and we need to make sure that in the context of that, uh, that through the WHO and other organisations, we create a level uh, playing field that allows countries uh, to uh, benefit from their own skill sets, uh, uh, as well as uh, offering uh, health workforces the opportunities to travel, to gain an experience, uh, and so on. Um, so thank you for taking the time to be here. Uh, as I say, Next time you come, you should come to Cork. Um, um, but uh, but you've, you have seen uh, um, uh, a pretty good city in Dublin too, I hope. Um, um, but I hope you'll be, as I say, leave with a smile, uh, but also carry with you something valuable and something meaningful uh, in the context of the responsibilities that you have to deliver health care uh, and to work with uh, health workforces that are doing incredibly valuable work uh, in all of the countries that you come from. So thank you very much uh, and have a safe journey home. Thank you.